We are currently in Stockholm, heading out on the Delta 88. It's a boat that we've seen lots of pictures of, lots of video as it's been going through its pre-testing and we've been very excited about testing it and we are the first magazine in the world to get on board and complete a full test. Weather's a bit miserable today so we're heading out to go and do our speed runs, drive the boat. It's got triple IPS 1200, 900 horsepower a piece. It's been doing 38 knots in its, uh, its pre-tests which all sounds lovely so uh, we're going to go out now, have a quick drive and uh, report back. Although it's very difficult to tell, we are currently doing just under 25 knots and it feels like we're doing less than half of that and I mean that really is the 88's party piece despite the fact that you've got 2700 horsepower back under the cockpit. It's unbelievably quiet, I mean really amazingly quiet and effortlessly fast too. It'll happily cruise at 26 as I just said but flat out it's doing 38.2 knots which feels like walking pace from on board but I wish I was off the boat looking at it go past me at 38 knots because it just must look just completely ridiculous. We're buzzing around the islands here completely outpacing the little commuter boats they just can't keep up yet the entire time there's no noise there's no rattling there's no squeaking you just simply move faster through the water. This is incredible. The other thing that stands out about driving this boat is how agile it is in a way that it really doesn't deserve to be. And as I said, you know, it's 78 and a half feet long, um, but you'd have no idea that this little steering wheel is attached to three pod drives because it's so light. I mean, it's one finger turning block to lock light. It feels like you're on a 25 foot rib. And when you do turn, there's a really nice amount of feeling. In fact, it heals more than its smaller 55 foot sibling, um, which has, turns very flat. This really does have a nice little bank, which brings a bit of a smile to your face. The fact that something this big, the way it looks, leans into the corners like a 40 foot sports cruiser. And you can do this all the way up to top speed as well. So opening up now, full revs, 2300 RPM and the speed is climbing, 36 knots, and when you get right up to that top speed of about 38, you do full hard turns, lock to lock, she just grips and goes. Uh, that's better. Astute viewers and listeners amongst you will have realised that I called the boat the 88 yesterday, it says 88 on the side, but it is in fact the Delta 80. The reason it's the 88 is purely down to the owner of this boat's request, he wanted it to be written 88 on the side, so they've done it for him, but uh, it is the Delta 80. Let's talk briefly about the helm position on board the boat, because it's a real standout feature. The first thing that you see as you walk up to this area are these three fantastic seats that have been pulled straight out of a Bentley in this nice tan leather and they all bolster and the middle one actually moves electronically. The idea being that you can then sit like Dr. Evil in your chair, get nice and close to the steering wheel and have the joystick right here in your hand. Obviously you can use this to steer at full speed now which was something you weren't able to do previously. I would probably still want the throttles a little bit closer but aside from that, I think the setup works really nicely. Then, of course, you've got really clear instrumentation, three nice big screens right in front of you. These are 15 inches, they're gonna change them for 19. Um, but all the information you could possibly want is presented right in front of you. And a really nice feature, and something I haven't seen before, is the iPad, which is actually integrated into the helm station right here. I mean, what a great idea. More and more people are using chart apps on their iPads, so why not make sure that there's a place for you to put it on the helm station? Moving away from the helm, and then you can start to 
enjoy the pretty spectacular saloon that's on this boat. The main thing is how much light there is, and it's the same as the, the 54, which we tested last year. You have glass running all the way around the wheelhouse, really slim mullions at the windscreen, and you've also got skylights, two of which, which open. And it just feels, it feels like a sort of New York loft apartment in here. Really plain, really simple, nothing too complicated, but still very, very comfortable. And really nice little details like these trays, which come out of here, can be used to take drinks. That's the cockpit. This one does the same thing. And then right back here, you've got two identically sized, really comfortable lounging areas, which obviously open up onto that cockpit back there. We're in the master cabin now, and it's a really quirky take on the whole master cabin thing, actually. Uh, you've got the bed here, quite low, quite big, nice and comfortable. Plenty of light above, thanks to those two windows, which look quite small from the outside, but actually pump a lot of light in here. There's one on the other side as well. Um, and then you've got this central partition, obviously, I mean, for store bits and bobs. And this is also where your telly lives. And what's really nice is that it's two-sided. So you've got a telly this side, so you can watch it in bed. And then on the other side, there's a telly here too. And the reason there's a telly here too is because you've got a really nice, cosy little separate living area in your own cabin, which I think is really nice. It means you can shut the door, get away from guests. The owner has got their own place to come and chill out in their cabin, which is, uh, is, is a really, really nice little, little spot. Elsewhere, behind me, full walk-in wardrobe with lots of shelving and plenty of place for, for hanging bits and bobs. And then just the other side of these cabinets here, there's a large ensuite bathroom, his and hers sinks, separate toilet and shower on either end. All in all, very, very comfortable space. Elsewhere on board, there's a VIP cabin forward, which is also ensuite, of course, and then two identical guest cabins with Pullman berths and side-by-side uh, -side bunks as well, both ensuite. And there's also a little day heads up front as well for people to go and use the toilet during the day. I really like the helm station on the flybridge of this boat. It works really, really well. You've got four forward-facing seats, plus the helm seat. Helm seat is front and centre. And as with the lower helm station, you have the joystick falling perfectly to hand on the armrest. Seat moves in and out, and it's bolstered. Really good stuff. The dash is nice and close to you. You've got the steering wheel right up in your chest, just where you want it. Everything falls to hand. And it just feels like a real little cockpit, like you're in a space shuttle. Everything's really focused around the driver. The view out is excellent and, of course, it's even quieter than downstairs. What's not to like? Let's take a look at some of the deck spaces on board the 80, shall we? Uh, one of the most notable features, as well as having the cockpit and, of course, the flybridge, you also have this excellent living space here, where you've got this central sun pad, nice and wide, and there's also storage for the life raft underneath the middle section. You've got a walkway in between, so you don't have to walk all the way around to, uh, to go from side to side. And then this really nice seating area here. That table folds out with double leaves, so it's really, really big. You know, plenty of people sitting around, having something to eat, a few sundowners. It's the practical touches as well, though. I mean, the detailing here, there's these cup holders, one each side, they're dotted all around the boat. But you can also use them as an extra handhold. They're so solidly put on there, real high quality. And then here, room for pretty much all the boats, fenders, lines, these are really good deep lockers, one each side, I mean you can't have enough big spaces like this on a boat of this size. Interesting setup they've got at the back of this boat here, they've got this Opac Mare hydraulic bathing platform section which folds a section up out of the bathing platform and down into the water and as you can see it includes some steps. So eventually what will happen is this will go all the way around and lead steps down into the submerged platform. Great for swimming off, great for retrieving a MOB if somebody falls overboard, and it can also be used to launch the tender. You don't have to do that on this boat though, because it has a full tender garage as well, which is big enough to house a Williams 385.